Good afternoon. My name's Ben Holcomb. I'm a senior lecturer in the School of Mechanical and Mechatronic Engineering at UTS. I am here to explain a exercise on laser torsional Doppler vibrometry. And this is an experimental setup. I'm just going to grab the telephone from my colleague now and then I can show you some of the instrumentation in some detail. Thank you. Um, so the uh, setup is one whereby we have the dual parallel beam laser vibrometer, which uh, it's currently set up to uh, output only one laser beam. There you can see the one red laser beam on my hand here. There's a switch on the side to make it uh, output two laser beams instead. Now you can see two laser beams, but in this mode I'm using it to measure translational vibration initially with one laser beam. The laser beam will be uh, incident on this angular rig over here which is being driven by this uh, electrodynamic shaker over here with a sinusoidal signal. The sinusoidal signal is being developed or created inside of this oscilloscope. This is a, an oscilloscope with which the, you should be familiar. We can change the frequency of this sinusoidal signal with uh, this setting. I'm setting it to 25 hertz. We can change the amplitude with this, sig with this setting. So the yellow trace that you can see on the oscilloscope there is the signal being directly fed into channel one. That signal also goes on this T piece out through into the power amplifier, which is this unit over here. And I have a gain control also on this power amplifier, which if I adjust the gain up and down, you can see that the yellow trace, which is the input signal to the amplifier doesn't change, but the vibration that I'm measuring, which is the green trace, the velocity with that laser vibrometer, you can see that uh, changing uh, correspondingly. The blue trace you will see on that oscilloscope is another instrument, another transducer which is this accelerometer down here which is a piezoelectric accelerometer. It also has a force transducer so this is called an impedance head. It's two sensors in one but I'm only using the accelerometer output today and the accelerometer is powered by this permanent current source system over here so the cable from the accelerometer is this white cable in in here output here is uh, essentially signal conditioning that output cable goes into channel three of my oscilloscope hence the blue trace you will notice that the acceleration curve is a little bit um, lumpy because uh, mechanically this uh, rig is not the best we've got a shaker here which even though this has been given a sinusoidal signal um, by the amplifier well, indeed, the amplifier might uh, already make that sinusoidal signal from the output non-sinusoidal, so there might be some squaring of that, of that uh, waveform. By the time it gets to the shaker, the shaker is clearly a mechanical device, so that also will, have, um, um, will square the signal up. And then we've got this mechanical arrangement here, which is, you can see a rack, essentially, which is being driven by this rod here that's connected to this um, gear, and the gear connected through to our rotational target over here and essentially the backlash here in the gearing if I keep quiet you can maybe even hear it okay so that the, 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 the clearance between the teeth of the gear and the teeth of the rack is what is what's leading to the square nature or the non sinusoidal nature of that blue signal the green trace which is my velocity signal looks a lot better even though we're measuring essentially from the same position on the back of this rack here because I'm measuring velocity, it's obviously a different shape sinusoid. If I was to differentiate the velocity signal, you can see that, that that lumpiness is manifested in the velocity signal here and here. If we differentiate that, we'll see a similar looking signal. We'd expect to see exactly the same signal as the acceleration signal. That concludes, I believe, the introduction to the instrumentation. Uh, next, I will talk about the first measurement.